This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. These are the things you remember when you go through your wilderness, when you go through your hard time, when you go through your fiery furnace. These are the things you won't let go of. God's got plans for me. God's got plans for me. And He will work out these plans for me. Show me now what to do. Well, what do I do in between? I believe I receive, and there it is. I just praise Him for what He already said. The 2020 Vision Partner Program at Creflo Dollar Ministries is more than a program. It's a relationship designed to make a high impact in your life, our lives, and the lives of millions around the world. Text 2020 Partner to 51555 to become a 2020 Vision Partner today. your world so let's vow to make it a better place let every heart that means to know you love is here to stay Ooh, it's time we live a new life let us love shine bright in you we're saved by his grace so we embrace your love today Philippians 2, 13 in the NLT. Man, I am learning how to enter into that rest and let God do that work. Amen. Let God do that work. Oh, God is working in me, man. I used to be more concerned about the trouble. I, got, I, I, I used to be more concerned about the trouble and the thing I got to go through, and I wasn't paying no attention to the fact that, wait a minute, I need, I need to be more concerned about, that's God who's going to go through with me. And then the peace came. When I know I got to go through trouble and I know God with me, I ain't troubled. Who is like unto thee, O God? What can man do to me? What? Why are you going to be troubled by your trouble when you got God who is with you? Okay? Watch this. For God is working in you. There it is again. For God is working in you. I, I, I don't know, maybe I missed this in my Christian journey, but I really would have loved for somebody to tell me the day I got saved, now God going to do the work, son. God is working in you. Now, what is he doing? What is, what is the work that he's doing? He's giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Wow. See, you may be doing something that's not pleasing him, but, but, but hold up, God's working in you. He is changing your desire. How many of you know it's going to be very difficult to do something when there's no desire to do it? And God knows that. God knows when there's no desire to go to church, ain't no desire to pray, ain't no desire to please God, ain't no desire to, do, ain't no desire to, to uh, to, uh, to not have sex uh, out of marriage. Ain't no desire. Ain't no desire to, to I want to party. Ain't no desire not to. You're weird if you have a desire not to do what everybody else doing. Everybody, everybody going to get you. <laughs> For God is working in you, giving you the desire. So God is giving you a want to to replace what you didn't want to. And that takes some work. And he would just like to tell you, well, desire this, but that ain't how humans are. Some humans need that butt kicked. <laughs> and it'll work a desire you got out of you. <laughs> and you might not want God now. But God said, one day, that's all you're going to want is me. You might not want to go to church now, but one day you're going to be the first one here when the door opens. He know what he's doing. 
He know what he's doing. God know how to, God know how to change your desire. You can bet that. He know how to change your desire. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> he will. He'll do it. And he's doing it now. I just don't know why I always end up with the same kind of sorry man. <laughs> because you won't pay attention to the signs at the very beginning. You keep, you keep looking at that hair all curly, talking about my child gonna have a good, good hair. <laughs> my child, my child gonna have good hair. <laughs> and God, God's trying to like, listen, don't look at the hair. There's a sign here. There's something wrong with him. He's not ready for you right now. He's not ready for you right now. You a queen, and he's a king in the making, but I'm not ready for him. God didn't call you to make your man a king. Ain't no woman supposed to be making no man a king. God is the king maker. You better get on your face and, and help the Lord out. God don't need no help. I'm, I'm sorry. You don't He, he does need faith. He does need belief. He does need to know what the stance is. He does need, you can help him out by agreeing with the stance. You can call him holy when he ain't acting holy. You can call him righteous when he ain't acting righteous. You, you, you go back to the stance, the stance. I'm going to go to the finish line. I'm not paying attention to the race. I'm going to the finish line. He in last place with the race, but I'm going to the finish line. Yeah, man don't make you no queen. Amen. Taffy didn't make me no king. I was a king before I met her. I didn't make uh, Taffy no, no queen. She was a queen when I met her. God was working on her queenship. God was working on my kingship. And when it came together, we realized we are a royal couple. <laughs> living in a holy nation, which made us peculiar people. Yes, sir. We get so mixed up with these weird terms that people say, and you just grab it, hook, sink, and all. Just grab all of it. I love her. I want to marry her because she's making me out to be a better man. Don't, don't marry nobody that's depending on you to make him a better man. Because one day you ain't going to feel like it. Water turned off, the air condition ain't on because the bill ain't been paid. And you're like, Waldo, you, you pay the bill? Well, I tried. Tried. <laughs> God is working in you. Giving you, that's so important, the desire. What can I do if I don't have a desire to do it? God knows that. He put it in you. So he is going to change your crazy desires. Somebody said, I don't believe that. Uh-oh, we got a problem because I believe God. Amen. I started off believing he's the one that can save me, and he did. And I am saved by grace. Now, if he could be successful in saving me, he can raise me and change me and build me and deal with me. That's why it's important after you get saved to be where you're supposed to be. Yeah, thank you for that, Lord. We, we try to be saved, and then after we get saved, we want to do everything outside of God. I just don't understand why I'm not happy, because you're trying to be happy outside of God. I'm, I just don't understand how, you know, how come I can't be successful? Because you're trying to ex achieve success outside of God. Well, such and so, such and so, he'll be, you know, and he don't believe God, and his life is messed up more than you'll ever know. His life's so messed up. These people got billions of dollars and cry every night. And call, Pastor Don, I need to talk to you, man. I'm going to kill myself. 
Dog, this is the third time this week, bro. What is it? What is it that you don't understand? Materials and monies and all of the stuff of the world is not enough to give you real peace and real happiness. Why? That only comes from God. But you keep trying to get what you see outside of God. And he's got something so much more than what the world's demonstrating to you, but you won't let him finish working. Boy, it's been some kind of year for me. But I tell you what, boy, I know God like I've never known him before. Because what, what nothing on the line but my relationship with him. You take everything that I ever had, and as long as I got him, I'm good. Because ain't nothing you can take from me that God won't give it back to me better than when you took it. No. So when you get saved because you believe God, Find out where you need to be. Church shouldn't be optional every week. You should make that a fixed place in your priority. I need to hear the Word. You'd be surprised how people's lives change when they come and just hear the Word. When they hear the Word, they're like, oh, wow, I really needed that. Ugh. I wonder what else you really needed, but you never were there to get it. Now, when I do those morning confessions, there are people logging in from around the world. Their lives have changed, and they are growing <laughs> because they just show up to hear something by the Holy Ghost and say, oh, I really needed to hear that. The number of people who were ready to blow their brains out, but they were at the place where they needed to be. God knows what you need. Even if I don't have it in my head, he'll let it flow out of my mouth because he knows what you need. But we keep allowing ourselves to be in the wrong place, outside of God, trying to work ourselves, we fired God or put him on suspension and said, I don't need you to do this. I got this. And God's a gentleman. Okay, fine. You got it. And he'll watch over you, and then when you fall in the ditch, he'll be right there, and he says, I never left. I got you. You're going to be all right. Oh, God. You're going to be all right. I got you. Get the wisdom that you got out of this. Don't ever come out of a bad time and leave the wisdom behind. What did I get out of this? Lost my house. What did I get out of this? Lost my job. Don't keep blaming people for what happened. That means you're not willing to accept your, the responsibility for the part that you play. Anytime you continue to blame somebody else, you've not identified nor have you accepted the part that you played in it, which means you can't grow further. You didn't get none out of this because you're so busy to blame and every... You know, it, no, 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 no. What, what is it that you needed out of this to help you continue to grow and mature? God's working. God's working in you right now. He's working in you today. As you sit here, he's working it with you today. God knows how to change your desire. So just in case you don't think he does, look at some of the things you used to think of and the way you used to think before today and look at it. Where do you think that change came from? God's working in you. Say that. Say, God's working in me. What is he doing? He's working on your want tos. You're going to wake up one day and you're going to want to pray. Whew. Woke up, look at the clock, it's 4 30 in the morning. I ain't going to bed. I need some more sleep. I wanted to get up and pray. I need to spend time in this presence before I come before your presence. I, I need to spend time in this presence. I need to spend time 
praying in tongues and don't even know what I'm saying, but I know that something's going on. And while I'm praying, I'm understanding. And he's talking to me about this. And he says, look at this scripture before you get up. Look at that before you do that. Don't use that title. Don't about understand that. Say this. Oh, my gosh. Go. Give me the utterance. Give me the utterance. I ain't planning on saying all the stuff I just said. But the utterance has come. Because he's working in me. Real Christianity is not the church stuff. Real Christianity is the personal relationship with Jesus regardless of what building you're in. I don't know if you'll ever come back to this church again, so why I got you, I just want to tell you the truth. God's working in you. Yeah, Pastor, you said that. Yeah, I know. God's working in you. But I can't tell you the number of times I stopped the work in me because I felt I need to do something. I need to go feed some more poor people. I need to go and do some more good deeds. I, I need to go and, and, and give some more money. I need to go and I need to do these things. And, and there's nothing wrong with that because it's God that will, will promote the work. Any, any work you do out of love, any, if the love of God is motivating that good deed, that's good. That's what God wants. But he don't want you doing it out of some selfish motivation. He wants you doing those good works and those good deeds that's promoted by love and a desire that he's worked in you to do it. Not only will he give me the desire to do what pleases him, but he's going to give me the ability to do it, the power. Power is the ability to get the job done. He'll give me the power to do what pleases him. Now, let's look at this scripture here. Probably maybe the last one because I just kind of went off script, which is good. Psalms 138 and 8 in the NLT. Psalms 138 and 8 in NLT. God is doing the work. He says in verse 8, the Lord will work out his plans for my life. God, look at that. Jeremiah says, I know the plans that I have for you. They're good and not evil. So God has a plan for every one of your lives. Everybody in here, God did not create you without a plan for you. And you think, oh, I'm too young for a plan. Oh, I'm too old for a plan. Oh, you're a woman, I don't have a plan. Oh, you're a man, I don't have a plan. Oh, you've made so many mistakes, and oh, God don't want to use me. That's what the devil would like to do. He wants to get you into a place where you would be so condemned that you just say, God don't want to use me. But look at this. The Lord will work out his plan for my life. Whatever the plan is for your life, he will work out that plan for your life. For your faithful love, O Lord, endures forever. Don't abandon me, for you made me. It almost, it did something to me when I realized he is responsible for working out the plan in my life. No, I love what he says, work out his plans. God has plans for you. <laughs> God has plans for you. I don't care how you feel. I don't care how undeserving you feel or how unworthy you feel. God has plans for you. And he says, I'll work them out. Somebody says, what can stop that? The pl your plans. I, I don't want my plans anymore. I mean, my plans are probably not going to be like his plans. And please understand, you're going to be kind of blown away because he's not going to do it the way you think he's going to do it. He might be working out, he might be working out plans for you when you lost your job. I just don't see how God working out plans for me and I lost my job. That's all right. It's fine that you don't see. Just hush your mouth and watch. Give it a chance. Don't, don't condemn and, and complain and, and remain. God, this, this is a, these are the things you, you remember. These are the things you remember when you go through your wilderness, when you go through your hard time, when you go through your fiery furnace. These are the things you won't let go of. God's got plans for me. God's got plans for me. And he 
will work out these plans for me. Show me now what to do. Well, what do I do in between? I believe I receive, and there it is. I just praise him for what he already said. That's good. I just worship him for what he's already talked about. He's already said he's working in me. He's already said he's going to give me the desire and the power to do what pleases him. He already said he has plans for me and that he will work those plans out. I, rather than complaining about what didn't work out, I'm just thanking God. Thank you, God, I'm on course. Thank you, God, that somehow, some way. See, every time I go through a rough situation, I ask myself, all right, God, what is it you want me to learn from this? What is it? I'm, I'm in it, so what is it that I should be getting out of it? Well, that's the devil. No, I, 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 okay. you, you trying to tell me God ain't strong enough to stop the devil for something? Why did you allow this to happen? Yes, yeah. So I'm in it, so you allowed it to happen. Why, what do I need to get out of this? <laughs> Let me look at myself. Am I still selfish? Have I not learned or, or changed some things you've tried to get me to change from? Is there sin in my life that, that you want me to get out of my life and you got me there to bring it to attention? What? I need, this, I need to get something out of this. I don't believe in just suffering, just suffering, just sitting there and just, you remember um, Wider, what's that, uh, Tombstone? You remember when, when, when Kurt Russell came up there and just slapped that guy at the bar and he just sat there and started bleeding and he said, what you going to do, just bleed? I don't, I don't believe just suffering, just suffering. I believe there's something I'm supposed to get out of it. I'm supposed to get something out of this hurt. I'm supposed to get something out of this pain. I'm supposed to get something out of this betrayal. I'm supposed to get something. I, I mean, I have, I, I have a, a just see stuff like, oh, and you know, never think, God's so kind. There, there are things I've gone through, and I can remember when God tried to just tell me. Yeah. Yeah. He, he said this, and I wouldn't pay no attention to it. I wouldn't, wouldn't do nothing. And then I'm back here again. He's like, and then when I'm in it, he says, you remember I told you. Yeah. I didn't want you to go through this, but I told you. <laughs> and, and, and we don't pay him no attention. We pay ourselves the attention. We don't pay him no attention. And then when we, when we get there, it's amazing how the, you have a recall of when he dropped that in your spirit. Yeah. He would love to do that. He would love to say, I dropped this in your spirit, do it. And I'm learning when God drops something in your spirit, move right away. The four things he dropped in my spirit this morning, I've learned to move right away. Because you can lose it. And you're like, oh, man, what was that? What was that? What was that? And God told you about that, that dude. When you first met him, he said to you, when you first met him, and then you married him, life was miserable, and he said, now, I got to teach you, so the next time I say this before you meet somebody, you won't be marrying him because you know this is what happened. And now you're pregnant, now the kids got to suffer because you don't want to be with him no more, and now they got single mom, and then they, they one what happened with their dad, and all that kind of stuff, because we don't believe that God's got plans that he will work. Because it takes a personal relationship, not just come to church. Is there a difference between who God says you are and what you see in yourself every day? Don't worry, God's not done with you yet. Creflo Dollar uncovers how God works to line up your stance and your state in his series, When Will I Be What God Says I Am? I am the righteousness of God. That's my stance in Christ. But my state, my actual walk, may not look so righteous. Your state won't change your stance, but your stance is working to change your state because you're not responsible for this progression. God is. All four messages of this revealing series can be yours today. Get yours by calling the number on your screen, scanning the QR code, or visiting creflodollarministries.org and clicking eStore today. You can 
interact with Creflo Dollar Ministries anytime, anywhere. Engage with Christ on a deeper level. Develop your walk with the Lord and strengthen your faith. All of this is at your fingertips with our state-of-the-art custom-designed app. You got to come to the end of yourself where you recognize, I need a savior. I need an advocate. I need a peace offering. With the broadcast feature, you can access your favorite messages, sermon series, and more. The app puts you right in the sanctuary with live streaming of services. You can receive practical advice for applying the Word of God to your life every day with our daily devotionals. There's something about the mercies of God when others want to count you out and stone you and all kinds of things or pointing fingers, but thank God for Jesus being right there. Add events to your calendar, set reminders, get directions, share with friends, and even give securely through this platform. Visit creflodollarministries.org slash app or text app to 51555 today. I think you would be amazed at what Creflo Dollar Ministry does every day around the world. Testimonies come in from all over about the impact we have. And I wish you could see the kids we feed. Their lives are changed and impacted for the better because of you, our givers. The seeds you sow into this ministry make a mark that, uh, that can never be erased. And I want to thank you so much for your financial contributions into the kingdom of God and into this ministry. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org. God bless you. I don't ever want to take for granted that you've received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And there's no better way to embark upon a new stage in your life than to enter into a personal relationship with Jesus. So if you want to become born again and begin an exciting, intimate relationship with Jesus, I want you to pray this prayer with me, and I'll, I'll say it so you can repeat after me. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that He died and was raised from the dead and has forgiven all of my sin, and I receive Him into my life right now as my Lord and personal Savior. So by faith, I declare that I am saved. Praise God. Now, that simple prayer changed your entire eternal destination. And we want to welcome you to the family of God. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.